Point of View is sponsored by First National Bank. First National Bank, how can we help you? Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we get the right guests. We ask the relevant questions on issues that matter to you. It's an interactive show, and we're happy for you to join us with your comments. We will scroll the WhatsApp number on the screen. If you're watching on social media, please feel free to join the conversation. Don't forget The Point of View is brought to you by First National Bank. First National Bank, how can we help you? I have a big, big fish tonight on the show. I'll tell you who he is, but it's going to be exciting. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. So it's been a very eventful week for the past few days. The budget has been read. There's been many, many issues being discussed on air. And of course, this week as well, the energy minister visited certain key power installations and met some of his key lieutenants to deliver power for us. The CEO of the Ghana Grid Company also authored an op-ed which was widely distributed, and he refuted the idea that Ghana was ever going to go back to doom so. I am privileged to have the CEO, engineer Jonathan Amwakuba, to give us some insights into Ghana's power sector, what role Gridco plays in there, whether we are in Dumso or Dumkra, and why he believes our power and our lights will be on for a while to come. Uh, good uh, evening. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good evening. Uh, good to have you. So, where is Gridco in the, in the power value chain? Just explain to us, because we, we know there's ECG, Gridco, and I think VRA. What, what's your role as the, the, the middleman? Oh, thank you very much, I mean, Looking at the uh, power electricity value chain, we have the generators, then transmitter, which is Gridco, and then the distributor. Um, let me use this analogy. Farming, you know, like tomato farmers. The generators are the farmers who farm, and we have authority, authority um, as Asogli, we power, you know. Then um, for the distributors, we have ECG and um, Netco, and then there are also some other uh, key uh, power users like the mines, Aluworks, the steelworks. So they are the retailers, let me put it that way, using the tomato inside. But then when they go to buy the uh, power, they will need somebody to carry it, the transporter, which is the articulator. So Gridco's uh, uh, position is the articulator. The articulator to go and bring it. <laughs> so, so no matter how much the farmer produces and how much the person wants to sell, if the trucks don't convey the tomatoes, we will not get the product to use. Exactly so, as you have said. But then, Gridco plays a dual role, you know. Gridco is the one who operates the power system. So we are an operator, the National Interconnected Power System. Then we are also the, um, as I told you, the one who wheel the power from the generators to the um, distributors. To, to then distribute to the retailers, which to is... The, 
children, the companies and then the, the households. The households, yes. Mm. So does that mean you are best placed to know what is happening in the overall system? Exactly. So as you have said, we are located in the middle. So we see what is happening upstream and then we also see what is happening downstream. So we are best located to know what is happening in the overall power system in Ghana. Just how has the journey been since you became a separate entity? Because in the past we had ECG and then we had VRA. A few years ago, the two were decoupled. Has it been worth it? And what would you say has been the benefit of that decoupling? The decoupling came about when we had to reform the power sector. As you said, VRA was operating both the generation and the transmission with ECG being the distribution. It came a time that uh, we needed to have independent power producers. And in order to have a level playing field, the transmission part had to be decoupled from the uh, main uh, authority, which is the Water River Authority, in order to attract the independent power producers. Since Gridco was hyped off from Water River Authority close to 13 years ago, we have had a lot of uh, independent power producers coming on board to set up plants, and that has made uh, generation very, um, what is it called? We have a lot of generation, so Ghanaians have a lot of power mm. to deal with in their homes. Mm. So it, it, it's been worthwhile to mm. do such a thing. I notice we have a lot of generators. Yeah. We have, it's possible to have more than one distributor. but. It, can we also have more than one transmitter? So can there be other grid codes? Because when you were given the breakdown, VRA, uh, Asogli and Co. on the generation side, and then on the distribution side, it appears you can have many. Is the role of grid code such that you have to be only one? The transmission is a national monopoly in most cases, mm. especially when it comes to the system operations, mm. the one who operates. But then, um, the laws in Ghana, there's a legislative instrument, LI 1939, which, no, uh, yeah, 1930, no, 1937, I think, which makes it possible for people to also own transmission assets. So far, we haven't seen any, I don't know the reason why, but I believe that in the future, when we decouple uh, the system operations from the transmission asset, then we may have people coming in to set up mm. um, other transmission services mm. with the system operator operating the whole system. Now, you penned an opinion which you published in the newspapers on Monday. Um, it's not very usual for the CEO of a parastatal to share an opinion on a controversial issue. So just give me some the thinking process behind deciding to write that article, putting your name under it, and frontally tackling the issue of Doomsaw in the article. Exactly so. I mean, you recall that lately there had been a lot of uh, some intermittent power outages, which are due to many reasons, you know. And the one that brought the camera back was what happened on Sunday, the 7th of uh, March, uh, 2021. And you know, since uh, Dumso, that term, um, entered the lexicon of Ghanaians, uh, uh, many people don't actually understand what Dumso is, you know. So any time that uh, the, somebody's life go off, it may be a local action. It may be uh, an action from grid code. Maybe we are requesting from, for some work to be done, or even ECG requesting for some work to be done. Once my lights go off, I would say that um, this is doing so. So in order to allay the fears of Ghanaians, I have to come up with this uh, opinion editorial to say that um, what we think is doing so or what we are expressing is not the doom so that we know of, but then this is something that happens not often but intermittently, sometimes in the, in the, in the sector for us to do some work or maybe there's a fall that we need to attend to mm. uh, in order to bring the situation back to normal. So I had to put mm. this paper up for people to read and try to explain to them 
what actually is happening for them to have an understanding and to allay their fears that Doomsaw is not coming back. And you did that very well mindful of the fact that because Doomsaw is such a controversial and also political thing, you are putting yourself out there. Because this is a, a subject that I'll show you very soon how many impressions the word Doomsaw gets on social media. It's a very popular topic. Exactly. So you, you, you consider the risk and still went out to say, we are not back to Doomsaw. Exactly. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a technocrat. I'm a technician. So from my point of view, I have to tell it as it is, you know, devoid of politics. I mean, the people who want to do politics can do politics with the thing. But for, from where I sit, I have to tell you what the situation is and then mm. to assure you that what you are thinking of is not what is happening mm. and that we are ever ready to um, attend to any problem and solve every uh, situation that comes about for people to have the power and the lies mm. to go about their normal duties. Let me quote something from the article. In the second paragraph, you said, the general sentiment undoubtedly is the fear of a return to perennial power outages, popularly known as doomsaw, quote unquote, which defined the period in the country in times past. This is my emphasis. Let me say this. Doomsaw is not coming back. Indeed, the nature of the power system value chain makes that impossible. End of quote. That's very serious. Indeed. <laughs> impossible. What we know to be the doomsaw of the fast of the past. Is what I'm talking about. Okay. You know, and how the power sector is set up now makes it impossible for that type of doom so to be back. So I have to emphasize that for everybody to know that yeah, we are not. So you're saying that the type of doom so we had in the past, mm -hmm. in reference to what what caused it, or because for as far as, far as what I was saying, doom so is lights off on no, with a regular schedule during, yeah there was a regular schedule and in some cases it went up to 24 hours even to 48 hours mm -hmm. you understand but since since we came on board we've never had such situations arising you understand? if your lights go off and it is uh, a scheduled maintenance there is a time allocated to it you will see an announcement ECG or Gitco has requested that uh, there should be an outage between the hours of, let's say, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for the work to be done. Mm -hmm. You understand? And at the end of the day, you are restored back to normal. Sometimes, maybe uh, some two hours is needed for some work to be done. So you are taking off for two hours, and then at the end of two hours, mm -hmm. the lights come. So that's not doing so. That is not doing so. Sometimes, well, also, maybe there is a fault, a transient fault. <laughs> You would have the light go off and then maybe five minutes it comes back or something. Or even in a split second it comes back. That is. So are we, so just, just, just be clear. I'm asking because as I speak to you, I have this um, grid co outage request for the Volta region. And permit me to just read says, The Ghana Grid Company has advised ECG to interrupt power supply from Thursday 18 March 2021 to Monday 21 March. That's about four days. This request is to enable Gridco undertake repair works on their transformer that supplies power to both Volta and OT regions through a 69 kV transmission line from a Siekwe bulk supply point. Now, the schedule is given. Now, the, the, the affected areas are quite large, parts of Ho, Tanyigbe. So for the Thursday, you have 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's 12 hours. You have about eight or nine different communities, the whole of Hohwe, the whole of Amejope, Avatime. This seems major. You're telling me that this is not doing so. It states specifically that some work is going to be done. The reason why it is widespread is that Asiakbe is the hub from where the Volta region is supplied. So if you take Asiakbe substation off, it means that you have taken the whole of the Volta region and even the OT regions off. That is why it is, it is like that. If you have only one feed coming in, then you have a, a problem. But then if you have let's say two feet or end, end to end, you wouldn't have such a problem, you understand? So the nature of the network in the water region is that we have only a radial line. If we have a ring like we are having around this area from 
Kosovo to Kumasi to Takra Day back to Accra. You can feed from any point. You understand? But here, you're only feeding from a sequel. So if you take a sequel off, you have taken the whole region off. So it means you are distinguishing between also load shedding and scheduled um, outage. Outage. So, so then it means load shedding is doom so. Is that what you're saying? Like, if, say as in you're shedding load because you don't have enough, enough generation. That is, but then sometimes when, not only enough generation, sometimes when you are doing such work, you may have to shed. Okay. Load because you not take everybody off. You take some part off. All right. So the part that you have taken off is a type of load shedding. But the one that we know of in the past, because we lacked something, we had to do it said that everybody will get a little bit at a time. But now there is enough for everybody. Okay. Um, I'll come back to your article because I want you to explain something. But I wanted to show you um, something on social media because your, when I read your article on air, we shared it on social media. There were lots of reactions. So, and this is, uh, I'm just going to read this week. So, for example, 15th March, which is just a couple of days ago, Miss Forsen, Lydia Forsen tweets, please give us a doom source schedule so we don't have to worry about our appliances blowing up. Okay, that's point number one. And then, um, Kafui Day, March 7, which areas of electricity, now this is a week before, hashtag GAN, hashtag doom so. And then, Isaac Kaleji, Ghana is experiencing a total power outage, but those in charge say they don't know why their system has shut off. This was the day after the, uh, the, the day of the outage. Okay. Simon, okay, this is uh, far, far away, so let me come back to. Mauli Chikata, serious baptism of fire for Napo as it takes over the energy ministry. Hashtag doom so. March 8, Kafu Day, another power outage in Dansoman. Where else have the lights gone out? Then, um, March 15. Eugene Agbena or Agben something. At exactly 6 p.m. my time, my lights went off. No notification. This is doom so plain and simple. No amount of spin can twist it. If it were planned outages to fix something, we we'll definitely have had a schedule. We might have been docile for a while, but we are discerning. So this is March 15. Okay, so I'm... There's a, a lot of skepticism, and there have been a lot of complaints about lights going off. In fact, there's a gentleman called Nana Redamwa on his Facebook page. Nana, Nana Redamwa on his Facebook page, not the Energy Commission guy. This, this guy's a writer. He writes like maybe March 1, light went off 3 o'clock. He's actually sort of trying to create a grid in his Facebook page of the day's lights have gone on and off. So there's a lot of public skepticism about the claim that we are not in doing so. So what's your reaction to these many comments that suggest that you guys are having problems and simply don't want to admit it. Uh, as I have said, we are not in doing so, and I will repeat it. There are some little problems in the system. I mean, in every system, there are some problems, you know. And when the problem arises, all that we need to do is to try to fix it. And that is exactly what we do. We are here to fix the problems. We are not here to give excuses. And in the power sector, there are little things that may cause your light to go off. Um, as I said, it, it might be a request, or it might be something that had come in an emergency. In an emergency, you cannot, that thing has happened already. So when do you go ahead and publish uh, a schedule or to announce that uh, this is going to happen. These are, there are some of the things that you cannot anticipate. Mm. The ones that we are able to anticipate, like the Volta region one that we said we are going to do it, or as we said in subsequent months, mm. if you go around Accra and even on the, on the road, you will see that we are stringing transmission lines. We have built transmission lines that needs to be strong and we are going to string them and in order to string these lines, because they are in close proximity of existing lines, you have to take some of the lines off for safety reasons. Otherwise, you are going to kill human beings. You understand? When you are going to interconnect into an existing system, you have to take it off. Mm -hmm. And those ones are anticipatory, so you can you can you can announce that this is what is going to happen. Okay. But if it is an emergency. Mm -hmm. Maybe some overload 
you know, a transformer will have to go off. That one. So the, the, you cannot you cannot uh, give give prior notice. Fair enough. You understand. In the month of March, there have been two incidents. On the third of March, um, um, there was a an outage at approximately 6:30 a.m. Wednesday, March 3, which the grid crew blamed on an emergency valve at West Africa Gas Pipeline. And then you said that to avoid a total shutdown, power supply to some bulk points was disrupted, causing outages in parts of the country. Less than um, four days later, on March 7, there was a national blackout as well. And then you, you sort of try to explain this. So explain to the ordinary Ghanaian how you have two major incidents in just a week, both of which are significantly causing... So, I mean, you've said one is WAPCO, one is... Um, there's something that happened on a, a, line. No, a line. Yeah, but I'm saying that this is just one week. Yeah. And then you have These two big... You see, we cannot anticipate. If there's an emergency shutdown, gas, mm -hmm. we cannot anticipate. Even those who are transporting their gas couldn't anticipate it. Okay. So if there's a gas shutdown, what it does is that the generation stations that are using gas are not able to generate. So there is a shortfall in generation during that time. And in order not to have what happened on Sunday the 7th of March, which was the total shutdown of the whole country, some substations would have to go off. And we have programmed it such that they will go off by themselves in order to keep a balance. If you don't keep the balance, that is when you have a total shutdown. In the, uh, on the, the Sunday the 7th one, mm -hmm. there was a problem with the transmission line. Mm -hmm. And when that transmission line tripped off, the adjoining lines, you know, if you go to some areas, you don't have only one line, but you have a lot of lines mm -hmm. all feeding. So if one line goes off, what it does is that the power that was free on that line would have to be shared amongst the others, the, the other that are in, in that uh, corridor, mm -hmm. you understand? Then in so doing, Depending on the amount of power that was on the line that had been shut down or that had gone off, you are going to overload the other lines because every line has its capacity. There is mm. a limit to mm. which you can load the lines. And if they exceed that, what happens is that they also would have to shut off. Or shut because I was going to ask you, you said the thing happened on the line between Aboise uh, and Pristia, this is Western Enclave. Yes. Somehow, the Akosombo hydro plant also had to go off. Yes. Which is why you are. How does that work? Because you're, this is one is one is thermal plant and this is hydro, and one is in Western region and this one is this side. So for those of us who are no engineers, how does something happens in Abuazi mean that the guys at Akosombo too have a problem? You know the power network. Uh -huh. It's interconnected. That's okay. what we call the National Interconnected Transmission System. Mm. We have transmission lines, we have generating stations. Mm -hmm. And as I said, there should always be a balance. You understand? So when uh, the transmission lines go off, it means that a chunk of load had been taken off. Mm -hmm. Then, especially for the thermal plants, when they see that they will shut down by themselves. Okay. But they are very sensitive. Okay. Very sensitive. They run at about 3,000 revolutions per minute. Before you blink, it has gone 3,000 revolutions. So when there is no load and it is generating so much, it will go into a runaway speed. It oh. will go over the 3,000. So it shuts itself down. So it shuts itself down in order not to be destroyed by its own inertia or okay. speed. Okay. When that happens, then it means that, in this case, there might be more load than the generation. More load than the generation. Mm. And when the thermal plant shuts down, it remains only the hydro plants in Akusumu. And that one also saw that oh. it could not carry the load that is required. So they also would have to... So it's an intelligent system. A very intelligent system. That talks to itself. 
Exactly. This is the point of view. We're talking to the chief executive of the Ghana Agri Company, Jonathan Makuba, who's taking the time to explain to us how the power system works, the interconnections, and why he believes we will not return to the era of doom so anytime soon. He authored an op-ed which we're asking him to explain to us. Hopefully later on he'll take us to the main control center to show you how the <laughs> oversee Ghana's power system. We'll be right back. Good Day Energy Drink keeps you going. Available in major supermarkets and shops near you. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Fellow Ghanaians. The Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service and Partners are introducing a vaccine against the deadly coronavirus. From March 2021, Ghana begins a free national vaccine rollout for all persons 18 years and above. Starting with healthcare workers, government officials, security services, the aged and persons with underlying conditions. The COVID-19 vaccine is safe, effective and has been tested and approved by the FDA. Please remember... The vaccine is an additional preventive measure, so all existing protocols must continue. Let us continue to wear our face mask, frequently wash hands with soap under running water for at least 20 seconds, or sanitize often and practice social distancing. Stop the spread. Get vaccinated against coronavirus for additional protection and prevention. This message is from Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service and Partners. This advertisement is FDA approved. Welcome back to the point of view. Tonight we're talking to the CEO of Gritco, the Ghana Grid Company, the organization at the heart of the operations and the transmission of power to us. Very interesting analogy. If, uh, if a VRA is the tomato farmer and ECG is the tomato seller, Gritco is the transport company that brings power to your homes. Brilliant. Now, Engineer Makuba, your article said a couple of things I feel you should explain. The claim that Doomsaw is impossible because of the nature of the power system value chain. What do you mean by that? You recall that, as I said, in the, in, in the past, uh, uh, you know, I mean, what gave rise to the Doomsaw? Uh, of young, of your, you know, uh, there were problems with the West Africa gas pipeline because some pirates had gone to disrupt the line. So there was no gas coming from Nigeria at that time. And then also Akosomo had gone down, really, really down. The level at that time had gone down. And then um, there were not enough generation. We had just uh, discovered gas in Ghana at that time and we are trying to uh, exploit the gas. But as we speak now, we have enough uh, generation capacity, we have enough gas, gas from the West, gas coming from the West Africa gas pipeline. Uh, Akosomo is fairly up. So if you combine all these things, for me, I, I don't think that mm. we are going to go back. But some will, some will say it doesn't lie in your mouth to say this because a lot of the 
generation plants are even independent. I have the list here. So, and there are issues which are extraneous. So you said gas. So what if there are payment problems? What if there are disputes which lead to, I mean, we had COVID. Some companies can't even generate because of whatever. I mean, the list of, I'm, I'm, the, 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 the generators are so many. And so if you say we will not have, how do you know whether Senate or AXA or Ameri or KTTP will have enough generation at Gridco to tell us that that, because don't forget the previous doom so was a generation problem. And generation is not because of generation capacity, mm -hmm. but it's about, before, it's about availability of, of, of fuel and paying for it. It started with capacity, but then as capacity was coming up, then as you said, availability, because for me, availability, that, I mean, it doesn't mean that the machine is, I, I, you have to have full availability. I remember I came to your studio and I was telling you that you have to have full availability. What happens is that we sitting at the center uh, would have to ask generators to give us the availability. And we do this every day. We do this every day. By 4 p.m., they have to tell us how much they are going to generate the but, next day. So that's a past figure or what they are doing now. They are doing now. How, how do we know what will happen to Ameri in three months? In three what, what do we know if there will be a disruption of gas supply because some pirates have gone to bomb the Nigerian that, system? That, that, that's a false magic. Yes, if, so that's what I'm saying. You, you that's what, so you, so you, you cannot magic. say there will not be doom so because it's not within your control. That's the point I'm making. There are people who do economics, I mean, study economics. I mean, I've never studied economics, maybe you did. They always put the caveat, say, all things being equal. So we are talking about all things being equal. Then you should have in put that in the article. Oh, no, I mean, but it's Yeah, because you made a categorical statement. I have to be categorical. Doomsaw is not coming yes. back. Yes, and I repeat. And it is impossible. It is impossible for it to come back. I are you speaking by faith or by sight? <laughs> I'm not a prophet, but <laughs> when I speak, it comes to pass. Interesting. Let's talk about your system that you oversee. One of the things you said in the article was that work is underway to fix certain incidental problems in the power system with your partners. Then you made reference to a transmission line in some work in Tampo. And then you also mentioned the Pokwasi substation. What are these things and why would these things occasion some power uh, interruptions whilst they are finished. Because I think you hinted in the article that because of some of the things happening, mm -hmm. there will be intermittent power outages for some residents. So what, what are these projects about and why will they occasion power outages? Okay, what we are doing now is that uh, we are constructing a 330 kV line from Kumasi, a place called Amumaso to um, Kintampo. As a matter of fact, it was, or it is from Kumasi all the way to Bolgatanga. Okay. And we categorize, categorize it into three lots. Mm -hmm. Kumasi to um, Kintampo is one lot. <laughs> Kintampo to Tamale is another lot. And then Tamale to Balgatanga is another lot. Mm -hmm. We are finished with the two lots. That is from um, Kintampo to Tamale and from Tamale to um, Balgatanga. What was remaining was the one from Kumasi to Kintampo which was stalled due to some funding difficulties. But uh, we are able to fix that, you know, by uh, the funding agencies uh, stopped disbursing the money because they said that they wanted some guarantee from government, which government provided to them. And because of that, the contractors have gone back. And we are thinking that when that is completed, it's going to strengthen the transmission system robust. What, happen, what is happening now is that a lot of power is being transported to the north and it has to go through the Kumasi old substation. And there is a line between the new Kumasi substation and the old Kumasi substation. And because a lot of power is being transmitted, it gets overloaded and sometimes it takes off the power in Kumasi. That is why we have those voltages uh, or, or uh, shutdowns in Kumasi. Of late, but then we know that when the Kumasi 2 or the Amumaso, which is Kumasi 2 to Kintampo, is completed, 
instead of going through the old Kumasi substation, we are going to bypass it mm. and go straight to Kintampo. Thereby, the power that will go to the Kumasi old substation will be the one that will supply the Kumasi area and it's you know, the greater Kumasi, if I can use that word. You know, the so what's your assurance to Kumasi viewers in terms of their power situation? When will the Ahumasu Kintampo be done? And what would that mean for power uh, customers in the central belt? We believe that by the end of July this year, mm -hmm. which is four months away, it will be ready. And as I've told you, we are going to bypass Kumasi to go to the north. Then the existing line will be for the, so that there will be stability in the... Yeah. Just a quick point. A lot of people in Kumasi say to me, they feel... Uh, not a lot, some people, that a lot of the power generators are down south. Yes. So the Western Enclave, this place we are, they feel that strategically it's not safe for them. So after doing what you're doing with the line, do you recommend that some generation be also sent to the central part of the, of the country? Okay. <clears throat> what we'll do again is that we are going to install a device, an equipment called a static VAR compensator mm -hmm. in Kumasi, mm -hmm. which is a 50 megawatt, which is going to help boost the uh, the voltages in, in, in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you listen carefully to the budget that was read, we made a request and graciously it has been put in the budget for 2021, so we are going to do mm -hmm. that. We also requested that uh, some generation should be placed in Kumasi. Okay. If we place that generation in Kumasi, it's going to boost the voltages and then the power that is being uh, used in Kumasi. We're not going to shift a lot of power from the south mm. to Kumasi. And I want to graciously, it was mentioned in the budget that the Ameri plant in Takrade is going to be relocated to Kumasi, which I think is a very good idea to mm. be done, you know. So, mm. Kumasi people should rest okay. assured that... Uh, Talk to me about to. Kasua area, Pukwasi, because we noticed that the population in Western Accra is growing very, very fast. So, demand is going to increase. It is increasing. What are you doing on that side? If you go to Pukwasi now, you will see that uh, through the efforts of the Millennium... Uh, Development Authority in Ghana, we are putting up a substation, a 330 kV substation in uh, Pokwasi. You know, we have built a transmission line 330 all the way from Takradi to this place. And we think that uh, we should break into the line. It's, the project is about 90, 92% complete. And by the end of May, June, that project will be uh, completed and it will give us about 600 megawatts of it's going to be the biggest substation actually mm. in terms of capacity in the whole of ghana and that wow. substation alone can i believe supply accra when all the other substations are mm. are off but it, it, it has to i mean easy you have to put their ads together in order to be able to evacuate power from that place and there will come a time that we would need to break into the 330 kV line to interconnect into the substation. And when we do that, that is when we are saying that it may cause some outages, you know, when we are doing the interconnection. That will come around May, June, thereabout, you know. And for Kaswa also, mm -hmm. I mean, Kaswa takes their power from parts of Accra, I mean, the Malam substation and also from Winneba. Mm -hmm. We are build because Kaswa has grown. We are building another substation in Kaswa mm -hmm. to supply the people of Kaswa to go to Swedru and you know. So these are some of the initiatives that we are we have put in place in order to strengthen the uh, the transmission system and then also to offset the. Uh, so should I take it that? The quote, intermittent power outages being experienced by residents of Greater Kumasi and environs and some parts of Accra will be over when you finish these projects. Because, so you are saying that by June 2021. We, we, yes. 
yes, it will be over. We are, we are doing everything possible to uh, minimize it, you understand, by taking some actions, you know. In Kumasi, one thing that we have done is that when we found out that that transmission line that I spoke about was getting overloaded, we said that, why don't we transport a transformer from Accra to Kumasi to put it at the Kumasi second box supply point so that we can supply parts of Kumasi from that place instead of supplying most of Kumasi from the box supply point which is in the center of town, mm. which line gets overloaded. So if we shift some of the load from the old substation to the new substation, we are not get, going to get that overload that I was talking about. Mm. You understand? So that we would have a reduction in the in the uh, intermittent outages, which I believe we did, as a matter of fact. So now, my people are not crying too much because uh, we we have uh, obviated some of the mm. things that. Uh, Let's end this segment with the state of your company, the company you run. Um, it, the last report I have from the finance ministry, the, the so-called state ownership report released in 2018, so this is dated. Your company, even though you were increasing revenue, you were making losses. So your net profit, if I can read, you increased your revenue from 472 million CDs in 2015 to 715 million in 2017. This is the latest report I've seen. 51% increase. But your profit did not follow the same pattern because your net profit was, came down from 44 million to a loss of 31 million. Your operations are also highly leveraged. You rely a lot on credit, so your gear ratio is very high. This doesn't look like a company that's doing well financially, at least this is what I have from 2018. Has the situation changed, or is it the nature of the business you do that because people will owe you and you have to collect money to pay, these are the kinds of numbers we should be seeing. This is normal for a transmission company. No, this is not normal for a transmission company. But it is getting better. Mm. I can assure you that it is getting better. What happened in the past was that, as, I mean, at a certain point in time, our tariff was reduced. You, you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. our tariff was reduced. And it gave rise to some of these things, you know. And although, we, we, I mean, uh, for as you said, this type of companies are highly geared, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of capital, especially working capital, to do most of the things that you would have to do, you know. And because of that, that's why you see such things uh, in the document. But as moving forward, I mean, of late, we had an increase in our tariff. I mean, we were restored to the level, the level before, but before. The, the, didn't the free power affect you then? Because don't forget, EC, the, 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 we pay ECG, ECG pays you, and you pay v VRA. No, so, we, we don't pay VRA. Ah, you don't pay VRA? No, you don't pay anybody? We, we don't pay anybody. Fair enough. So my question is, does the, your financial health not depend on what we pay to ECG? Exactly, that is what. So if ECG collects more, we get, uh, if they don't collect, on paper, it sounds, or it, 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 you see very good results, but there's a cash flow. As I said, I was talking about working capital. If the money is not coming, how can so I... So how much do they owe you? Oh, for now, it has been ring fenced by government. And is it coming down or going up? Coming up or going up. Yes, because we know that the more ECG owes Oops, you, yes, yes. the less you're able to raise money to do the things you just described to me. Exactly. So it's a matter of public interest to know whether the level of ECG indebtedness to Gridco is going up or down or is Currently, straight. we have some semblance of the, uh, uh, what is it called? Cash waterfall. So we are being paid from the cash waterfall. So whatever ECG collects, that goes into the board, is shared amongst all of us in the value chain. It doesn't have to come to them for them to give you first. No, in the past, that was what it was. So now it's cash water for? Yes. But what are the old ones they owe? That one, as I said, uh, it has been reinforced and then they are using ESLA to, to uh, defray the ESLA. The, 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 the. 
<laughs> Thank you for talking to us. Viewers, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we will enter the main place where Gridco, you know, managed the whole power system. I'll be speaking to the CEO of Gridco, um, Jonathan Amakuba, on his OPED and his confidence that Ghana's power sector is on an upward trajectory. This is the point of view. Stay with us. Available in major supermarkets and shops near you. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Fellow Ghanaians, the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, and Partners are introducing a vaccine against the deadly coronavirus. From March 2021, Ghana begins a free national vaccine rollout for all persons 18 years and above. Starting with healthcare workers, government officials, security services, the aged, and persons with underlying conditions. The COVID-19 vaccine is safe, effective, and has been tested and approved by the FDA. Please remember, the vaccine is an additional preventive measure, so all existing protocols must continue. Let us continue to wear our face mask, frequently wash hands with soap under running water for at least 20 seconds, or sanitize often and practice social distancing. Stop the spread. Get vaccinated against coronavirus for additional protection and prevention. This message is from Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service and Partners. This advertisement is FDA approved. This looks different. It is. See for yourself. Okay, so it's a photo. Look closer. Photos within photos. What about video? 8K video. Beyond cinema quality. So... You can pull portrait quality photos straight from video. But will it last the whole trip? Battery for the whole trip and the way back. This is different. Told you. Welcome back to The Point of View. So, as we finish talking to the CEO, he's granted us rare access to what we consider to be a very important part of the power infrastructure. To explain the point, he made. don't forget he said, there is the generator, there's the transmitter and the distributor. And the distributor is also the system operator and it's an intelligent system. So I have Stephen Debra, he's the manager for dispatch operations. Just walk us quickly through what they do here and why it's very important for Gridco to sense the national picture. Mr. Debra, thanks for allowing us access into your, your space. You are most welcome. So I'm told you are the manager for dispatch operations. What does that mean? I am in charge of coordinating the power plants, how they will do their generation so that end users have electricity in their homes. That's all. So the people supplying, you talk to them, and the people receiving, you talk to them. And you make sure there's equilibrium. Amazing. So what's happening here? I see different people sitting doing different things. Yeah, um, we call it a workstation. Okay. And we have three of such workstations here. All right. And the reason why we have three is that at all times, at least one should be working. Okay. So that we are not blind mm. to what is happening. So whatever operation we can conduct here, we can do the same thing here. Okay. We can do the same thing over there. Okay. What it means is that they are fully redundant and at any point in time we can take one down for maintenance work and we still carry out our operations. Now, if you look at the screen, we have live information. Okay. From all the power plants that are running. So this is real time, real time information. What's happening now in the whole Ghana? Okay. We get that information here. Okay. And that's the tool, in fact, the, the primary tool that we use to dispatch and make sure that it stays. Ah. It's important because I, w- I was watching KSM one day and he said, when light goes off, somebody, some child goes to stand behind some machine and just 
decide, decide which area to put off and on. Are you able to see the whole country? And do, is that how you put off the light? You just go and say, ah, Madina, they are making too much noise. Let's, <laughs> let's put them off. Is that what happens? No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> we don't just switch off light because we want to switch off light. No. We have this screen here. Okay. It shows the network for the whole Ghana. Okay. If there is light in any part of Ghana, we know. If light goes off in any part of Ghana, we know. But as you said, Medina is not on our scatter because what we see is Accra. The point at which we deliver electricity to Accra is this city that takes that point and then shares it among Medina, Adabraka, and Co. So Medina itself will not see. But the total electricity that is dropped at a certain point that we call the bulk supply point, that is what this city face, and then this goes to the, the whole Accra. So Accra, for instance, if you go to the Chasaku, we have set one bulk supply point there. If you go to Accra Central, we have one there, and then if you go to Malam, you have a bulk supply point there, and then when you go to Achimo, that's it. One is there. So ours is a war okay. kind of thing. So in MD's article, you made reference to what happened on March 7, where you said there was a problem with some Western line, and then so some things had to be put off, and then eventually it affected Akosombo as well. So typically, when that happens, you will see it in this room. You, you would know. Actually, it's right here. Okay. We will see it on this screen. Then when we see something blinking here, then you zoom it to the workstation. Okay. So, if a problem happens, the problem that happened, for instance, was from Abwazi to Christia. So, we go to Christia on this screen, and you see it. You go to Abwazi on this screen, you see it right here on this screen. So, that's what happened. In fact, we saw it clearly here. And in terms of demand, so let's assume so supply. So, let's assume some power plants are telling you that maybe next week we are expecting some problem. So, how do you use that information? to decide what you give ECG. So maybe three or four power plants say our supplier with gas or something doesn't have gas. So it looks like they're going to come down. And you have that information in advance. How do you use that to manage the power system so people don't get caught unawares about what's happening? OK, um, one week is even too short. We have long-term plan. We have medium-term plan, and then the short-term. Okay. And even in the short-term, we have the real-time. Now, in the long term, we are ahead of time, like 10 years, five okay. years. And then typically, we zoom in into one-year plan. That's what we call supply plan. So we have a one-year plan. All power plants give us their plan for one year. So we know in advance. Then out of the one year, we have one month plan. And then we have one week plan. We have three days plan. And then the next day plan. So we cannot be caught on us. Finally, finally, this week there was a, a notice to maybe ECG in the Volta region that there's some scheduled maintenance going on. And then you sort of mentioned specific places that will not have power for specific days. A again, is that something you guys do here? Or that's a different thing? Correct. In fact, for ECG to have electricity to give to the customers, we give that electricity to ECG. So any work on our part that will impact on ECG's ability to supply its customers, we need to engage ECG ahead so that ECG will be able to inform mm. its customers ahead by doing public announcements. But I must also give you some comfort that it's not every work we do that cause, causes interaction of electricity to ECG customers. So for every box supply point, we have what we call redundancy. Okay. So at any point in time, we are able to take equipment at the station for maintenance work. That doesn't impact on ECG. It's only when we can't help it, and that happens once in a long while, mm. that our work affects ECG, for which reason we need to sit with them and engage and then see how best. We can all coordinate and then 
so that the impact on the customers is minimized. So finally, how do you feel about our power system being at the nerve center? How confident are you that things are going well? Oh, in fact, I must assure you that we have state-of-the-art tools here. That, in fact, the whole West African subway, we are the best. Oh, wow. And even in spite of that, what we see here, we are even in the process of upgrading still. So I can assure you that even utilities like Nigeria, Togo, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone and Co, they come here to understand us and learn how we do our things and then they go and implement them. So I must assure you that what we have here is the best that can be anywhere. Wow. Well done. Thank you very much for talking to us. So we're speaking to Stephen Debra, who's the manager for dispatch operations here at the Ghana Grid Company. It's been a, an exclusive. This is a rare footage we've been given, and we're very privileged for that. Essentially, to let you know that the grid co is the nerve center. They understand what's happening in the system, and they're saying we are not going to return to the bad old days of Dumso, although there will be intermittent outages as they upgrade the system. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your messages. My name is Bernard Avle. We'll see you next time on The Point of View. Bye-bye. Point of View is sponsored by First National Bank. First National Bank. How can we help you?